call the meeting to order. Uh, Chairman Bauer, who's on his way, so we're just going to start the meeting now. Uh, just stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, In accordance with 940 CMR 29.10, remote participation adopted by Greater Lowell Technical School Committee April 17, 2014. Committeeman LeMay will be participating in tonight's meeting remotely due to geographic location. I'd like to have a roll call. Go ahead. Mr. Nucco? Here. Mr. Sheehan? Here. Mr. Kitchen? Here. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Here. Mr. Hogan? Mr. LeMay? Here. Mr. Bahu? And we have a public hearing for the budget uh, process tonight. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. Motion by Paul. Second by Matt. <coughs> Mr. Narco? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchian? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Ms. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? So good evening, everyone. I'd like to begin the FY24 proposed budget uh, presentation by informing you all that this budget was developed based on the governor's house budget proposal and data input from uh, our school administrators, teachers, parents, and community members and centered around improving achievement in order to develop confident learners and workers. As, as you know, the Massachusetts House Senate and governor uh, approved a change in state funding formula for public education, and that bill was to provide $1.5 billion into schools over the next six years. We are in uh, year three of that six-year plan, and uh, our budget will reflect that. The bill is aimed at tackling inequities, specifically for school districts with low-income students, English language learners, and special education students in order to close the achievement gap. This year we received a $2,654,648 increase toward Chapter 70 aid, uh, giving us a total of $37,225,283 in Chapter 70 aid. Uh, the budget I'm recommending uh, to the committee this evening includes more than $3,193,611 in additional uh, spending. Uh, I'd like to begin by talking about the foundation budget and rates, and rates <coughs> uh, per pupil. Uh, there has been an increase to the uh, rate for a vocational student, and that was raised to $16,490.74, which is a $793 increase. For a special education student, uh, we received $30,771.12, which is a $1,351.77 increase. Uh, and for our ELL students, <coughs> uh, the uh, per pupil expenditure was raised to $2,899.89, which is an increase of $384.46. For our low-income categories, which were added in FY21 that did not exist before, uh, in FY24, we are maintaining Category 10, for which we received $6,579.86, which is an increase of $737.22. Any questions on the foundation budget rates per pupil? Uh, the next slide is an overview of the foundation budget. 
based on our new rates of per pupil expenditures set by the state in our current enrollment, our foundation budget increased by $2,872,431 which is a 5.82% increase over this year's budget. As I said uh, when I began, this is year three of a six-year SOA implementation, and we should expect, expect roughly the same budget increase over the next three years. Uh, the $2,872,431 is all net school spending required funding that needs to be spent each year. And uh, that is an overview of our uh, foundation budget. Any questions on the foundation budget? Oh, what I didn't talk about, and I can, I'm sorry, was the required district min minimal contribution uh, is $14,996,648, uh, $14, which is a $207,783 uh, difference uh, from FY23. Um, so <clears throat> with our um, per pupil expenditure rates um, set by the foundation budget um, and our the remainder of our budget, our entire revenue picture includes $200,000 used from excess and deficiency for our operating budget. This is an increase of $100,000 year over year. Our assessment, including the minimum local contribution, transportation, and debt um, is in, is for all of our member communities is $17,878,743 or an increase of $243,979 on a year over year basis. Um, so there's a little bit of an increase in addition to the minimum local contribution that came from transportation and a little bit of a decrease to our debt number um, to each of those municipalities. Um, so you'll see the the large the increases fell to two communities in Drake and Tingsboro. Um, that was mostly due to the um, increased in enrollment in those communities where D Dunstable and Lowell saw decreases in enrollment um, and <clears throat> that, that caused the increases for their minimum contributions to go up. Um, additionally, the Chapter 70 <coughs> aid from the state is increasing $2,654,648 to $37,225,283. Um, our transportation reimbursement is estimated at $1.2 million or an increase of $194,984 on a year-over-year -year basis, bringing our total state aid um, to $37,716,232 or an increase year over year of $2,849,632, bringing our total budget revenue to $56,504,026 or an increase on a year over year basis of $3,193,611. <laughs> So the budget priorities for FY24 are focused on the following. Uh, refining our curriculum and instruction to expand opportunities for student voice and choice and strengthen ownership of their education, as well as opportunities to make connections between their academic and vocational co coursework and real world experiences. Uh, some, uh, some of the things that fall under that category include developing and implementing project-based learning, uh, partnerships with UMass Lowell, developing college and career pathways in engineering, CAD, electronics, and early childhood, expanding project lead the way courses into the technical programs, expanding dual enrollment to include, to include English Comp 2, uh, literacy action team working with technical instructors to improve literacy within technical programs, evaluating and developing EL curriculum in order to assure alignment to standards that are relevant to skills required in academic and CTE classes for our EL students, implementing a new benchmark assessment, which is the star reading and star math uh, assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me, the next uh, priority would be ensuring class size mitigation and adequate cost offerings and scheduling flexibility for all students. 
We're currently working with a scheduling consultant and focus groups to take a deeper dive into our current schedule and propose changes related to our master schedule, creating greater latitude for student placement within course offerings. <clears throat> Excuse me, working to establish an EL co-teaching model for core academics. Uh, our third pri priority would be allocating staffing driven by the need to align structures for student social emotional supports due to a higher frequency and severity of mental health needs. And I will discuss this in more detail on slide nine. Uh, the next priority would be maintaining educational technology and resources and equipment to ensure currency with industry and global trends. Uh, we are going to be uh, removing the, the floor in carpentry and adding all new uh, equipment to the carpentry program. Uh, aquaponics and greenhouse maintenance for our science programs. Microscopes for our science department. Textbooks for history, English 11, Algebra 1 honors, geometry, and biotechnology. Again, these are just some of the things that are falling within that priority. Providing relevant and personalized professional development and coaching for our teachers in order to develop capacity to sustain high quality instruction to meet the needs of our diverse learners and deeper the learning for all students. And supporting educational equity and opportunity <coughs> during a time where we're currently in right now, recovery and stabilization after COVID. Uh, and some of those uh, within that priority, we would be providing professional development to more instructors on project-based learning, uh, school safety and threat assessments, uh, professional development and de-escalation strategies to help support students with social emotional needs, uh, positive behavioral intervention, interventions and supports as a result of the new discipline laws, literacy across the curriculum, and EL coaching in the career and technical areas. And th those are our priorities for the FY24 budget. So those priorities when applied to our expenditure budget um, have an effect of increasing our administrative budget by $70,401. Uh, this is mostly due to contractual increases on salaries. Um, you'll see that our debt service is decreasing as we continue to pay that down um, and will continue to over the next few years as we continue on that path. Um, our fixed charges increased by $482,040. Uh, this is mostly due to insurance and utilities increasing on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, <clears throat> our instructional expenditure increases $1,683,513, uh, again primarily driven by salary increases on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, and a couple of new positions here in this budget. Um, our operation of plant, we are investing a lot in the upkeep of our school and redesign of shops um, so that they fit the industry standard and meet the modern needs of today's um, programs. Um, so we're increasing our operation of plant lines uh, $666,185. And our <coughs> other services budget increases $327,374. Uh, that is mostly due to the increases in transportation that we saw on a year-over-year -year basis um, for our costs. <clears throat> and uh, finally, we have uh, some decreases to our programs with other districts. This is school choice, um, where we have fewer students that are choice, um, choicing out to other schools like Neshoba and um, where they'd gone in the past that I believe is no longer accepting choice students. Um, we have less of a financial obligation for those students as well. Um, and uh, this year, given more um, certainty about our capital projects, um, we decided to move back to contributing to our OPEB fund a uh, $50,000 amount uh, to show a good faith effort of continual, um, mo continually adding to this fund uh, for our future liability. <clears throat> oh, this is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, again, some of these uh, notable expenditures that I believe I covered all in the uh, last slide, but um, to highlight some of the more key areas, some of the investment in equipment that we're making next year, again, is around that carpentry shop uh, renovation where we're redoing the flooring over there and we've allocated some funds to make sure that we get rid of some older equipment, bring in something a little more modern. Uh, we're going to continue to replace our display boards across the school and update our lobby projector, which is um, you know, coming up on, I believe, ten eight or nine years. years old at this, maybe 10 years old at this point. Um, so it's about time that it just needs a, a little refresh. Um, again, we're looking at those shop, shop areas and redesigning for effective teaching environments and hopefully expanding some of our more popular shops being electrical and plumbing and our culinary classrooms. Um, so we've allocated some funding for that. And then uh, we also have a capital expenditure included in this year's budget for the replacement of two of our mini buses. We're getting a lot more use out of those given the, tr the struggles with transportation lately and we have an aging fleet out there. So uh, we're looking to get on a schedule of replacing these on a, a more regular basis so that we can make sure that they're staying current and safe for our students. Okay. Uh, personal expenditures, that I, as I said earlier, uh, we, I'll start with the first apartment, which would be, well, I guess I'm going to go backwards. And I have uh, special education first. We're going to be adding uh, a paraprofessional, but this, the cost of the paraprofessional will be offset by a uh, paraprofessional that we currently have in guidance, a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional that is now leaving because that student will be graduating. We also are asking f to add a position of an adjustment counselor due to the high uh, needs of some of our uh, <coughs> students with social emotional uh, difficulties. We are asking for another adjustment counselor in special education. We are as also asking for an adjustment counselor uh, to work with the main office team to help support students uh, uh, through the main office. Next, uh, plant services. Plant services, we're asking for the addition of a custodian to support the new classrooms as a, as a result of the building expansion project. Uh, and we are also asking for co -op in cooperative education for a cooperative coordinator to assist the director of cooperative education with increasing student placements. Uh, this is offset by reorging and replacing uh, a worksite aid that currently works uh, with the director of cooperative education. In order to, to better support co-op, uh, you, we would need someone that has that license, the co-op director's license. So we are asking uh, for a co-op coordinator to support the co-op director to increase placements. Currently, uh, we're at 36% of students out on co-op, but we'd really like to get up to the 50% uh, range. And to be able to do that, we need someone to support the co-op director. <clears throat> And lastly, athletic coaching, due to the increase in student interest in participating in, in athletics, we would like to add a unified basketball coach, a unified assistant basketball coach. As you all know, we piloted a unified basketball uh, team this year, and it worked out so well uh, that we uh, want to add the coaching positions to this year's budget. One junior varsity field hockey coach, one assistant golf coach, and one freshman boys volleyball coach. And those are uh, the positions that we'd like to uh, add to this year's budget. Yeah, substitute. Oh, sorry. Uh, the substitute rates, uh, we're also asking to increase the substitute, substitute rates so that they will be comparable uh, with other districts. And uh, we're in need of substitutes. They're really uh, few and far between to come by. So we are looking to increase uh, the substitute rates uh, to a, f about 40 to 50 in each area. So uh, it, an individual with no degree would get $147.50. Uh, an individual with a bachelor's degree, that rate would move up to $162.50. 
and an individual who had teacher certification would move to the rate of 177.50. Uh, additionally, in this budget, we are recommending the use of $200,000 from our Excess and Deficiency Fund um, to m cover some of the expenses that wouldn't be covered by or wouldn't be allowable under net school spending. Um, those items are the Medicaid filing that we um, have a partnership with UMass Medical for at $7,000, our contribution to OPEB at $50,000, and then the capital per vehicle purchase at $143,000. <coughs> So our final uh, budget summary for FY24, our operating budget of $52,371,931 exceeds our required net school spending amount of $52,221,931 by $150,000 uh, from e excess and deficiency to cover non-net school spending eligible expenses. Our operating budget uh, for FY24, $52,371,931 must be spent on education to meet net school spending. Our transportation costs of $2,775,000. Our debt service, $1,307,095 and our OPEB contribution of $50,000 gives us a total budget of $56,504,026. The revenue sources uh, is sufficient to sustain the budget. Uh, our minimal local contribution, which we are assessing our towns, would be $14,996,648. <clears throat> our transportation assessment of one million five hundred and seventy five thousand our total debt assessment which is one million three hundred and seven thousand and ninety five dollars uh, our total assessment uh, to amongst our four towns would be seventeen million eight hundred and seventy eight thousand seven hundred and forty three dollars <throat> our chapter seventy eight uh, is thirty-seven million two hundred and twenty-five thousand two hundred and eighty-three dollars. Our chapter seventy-one, which is our transportation aid, is one million two hundred dollars, and the excess and deficient deficiency of two hundred thousand dollars would allow us to sustain our proposed budget. And this was this is where we like to take a, a little bit of a, a segue and say this is what you would normally expect from us in our budget as our regular operating. Um, this year, because we have had some capital projects come up, there are additions to the budget, um, and that's going to be focused on the project that's going to um, replace our track and field, which are original to the school uh, and in disrepair. So the total project estimated cost for the track and field and amenities building and grandstands and all the associated um, pieces and parts out on the field um, <clears throat> is four million dollars and this is going to be funded through three sources the first is a special earmark grant which the school has already received um, with help from Senator Kennedy getting this filed um, an appropriation in the state budget through the bond bill of 1.5 million dollars um, again Senator Kennedy is really helping us to um, drive this forward and get this project done and helping to secure that funding still through the budget process but we should be uh, finalized on that soon um, and then the third source is going to be a use of excess and deficiency from the school's funds above and beyond the 200,000 we already talked about of 1.5 million dollars <throat> um, that will take our excess and deficiency balance pretty low um, however there will additionally be a transfer to the operating budget of 1.5 million dollars from our LPN and adult ed accounts um, this is a makeup charge for not having um, charge building use costs, utilities, uh, maintenance, custodial fees, and those associated items um, to those funds in the past. Um, so moving those funds to the operating uh, when unspent will close out at the end of the year into excess and deficiency um, and make it sort of a net zero um, proposition of the use of excess and deficiency. Um, so as I stated, the current balance in excess and deficiency that was submitted uh, was 2200000 um, and the use of excess and deficiency will reduce this to five hundred thousand um, dollars and that includes our operating amount as well as our capital project amount 
um, but then as I stated the amounts transferred to operating um, if unspent will close back to E&D at the end of the year um, so we'll see a one year um, big dip in that fund and then a recovery of that fund um, shortly thereafter. Um, so with with the additions of our capital project, the budget that we're actually proposing is going to be $59,504,026. Um, you can see the increases of $1.5 million on the expenditure side to the operating um, budget for the transfer to operating um, dollar figures that are coming in and the capital uh, project costs of $1.5 million. And then again, the matching revenue sources on the other side. Um, you'll see the excess and deficiency increase to $1.7 million here. Um, and your transfer to operating of 1.5 million, uh, again for that total balanced budget at 59 million five hundred four thousand and twenty six dollars. We don't need motions yet, but there they are for later. Thanks, so. <laughs> thanks, Peter. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your support. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, hold on, I get up. All right. Is there anyone from the public signed up to speak at the public hearing? No one signed up. I get a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, we second. Motion by Matt. Uh, seconded by Kelly. Do we have a roll call? Mr. Darko? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kitchia? Yes. Mr. Moran? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Mr. LeMay? Yeah. You can hear him. Yep. Yeah, we got you, Curtis. I'm going to take a short. Don't read that. Uh, the fiscal year 24 budget will be voted on at the uh, school committee meeting coming up at 6.30. We Thank take, you. Take a short recess and come back for the regular scheduled meeting at the school committee at 6.30.